Hi, I'm Jack McMullen, new student here at Clemson, and I'm here to talk about my new student dialogue, The Sexual Politics of Hooking Up. Well, first, before we start talking about the, the dialogue itself, do we want to talk about, did our group achieve true dialogue? Well, I think that we did because everyone was included in the speaking process and opening their minds to the conversation. It was correct, it was politically correct, it allowed people who normally wouldn't share, share their thoughts to share their thoughts. It was respectful. Respectful was a big key. Everyone thought, oh, I respect your opinion even though I disagree with it. They let them know that they were, that they didn't agree, but it didn't, it wasn't degradating to their, to their thought process or the person themselves. That, that's big key. Because, for example, one person said that the woman had an easier time attracting females than males, and one girl chimed in after, said, I respect your opinion, however, I believe that it is equal and it's just as hard for a woman to attract a male. So, take from that what you will. The dialogue is essential to create good communication between peers. Okay. Were there active voices in my dialogue? Yes, I believe there were active voices in my dialogue because people would talk about what they believed multiple times. There was few people that were quiet. There was few people that would just sit there and say, oh, let's get this two hours over with. Let's get this done. They didn't, there was nothing about that. People talked, people shared their opinions. People like wanted to, wanted to put themselves out there in front of new people that they hadn't met. My dialogue was a little bit later in the year. So people had already been at the school. They'd already made friends. So it was another chance to meet some new people that they, that it was a new environment for them. So they enjoyed that. As I said, there were no reserved dialogue voices in my dialogue. They would just, there were probably one or two people that just sat around and just be like, time yet? But besides that, everybody else would talk. It was not that big a deal. And I felt that I played an essential role in the dialogue because I would, not just for playing devil's advocate, but I would just put in my opinions and I would just, respectfully talk to people, talk to them about what they thought, talk about what I thought. It wasn't that big a deal. It was just a couple of uh, new students talking. They talked about what they believed in. Just a normal conversation that I'd have with my friends. I just had a conversation with my friends a couple weeks ago just about religion for about two and a half hours. So longer than a new student dialogue. So nothing to worry about there. Um, I believe that Clemson University uses this dialogue to make people, new students, feel safe and secure and not judged by people. They want the dialogue because in a debate, people attack your ideas, they attack your person, they attack your sources, they attack whatever it is. But in a dialogue, it's a lot more reserved, it's a lot more friendly, it's a lot more, it's a lot more, um, there's more camaraderie. That's the right word I was looking for. And um, I don't know how I, how I feel about that because if, if someone is always being respectful, like, oh, this is good, this is good, if you're not, like, saying something about, oh, I don't think your sources are correct, oh, I believe that this could just be an outlier in the idea, or how did you come to this opinion? Few people really will say that in the dialogue because they're trying so hard to be respectful and not hurt the other person's feelings that they realize that some stuff gets away that isn't correct, isn't accurate, and it allows the thought process of the people to be clouded because they're so focused on allow trying to make sure that people aren't feeling judged. And I think that's that's where the issue comes when you're trying to make people feel better for not doing the right amount of things. Like, I would be fine. Like, if I said something like, like, the apple is the best fruit, and someone said, no, you're wrong, that's all judgment, you can't prove that, that strengthens me as an individual because, oh, I can't say something like that anymore because I feel like someone's going to tell me, so I'm going to find my sources, impossible to do, but I'm going to find something to prove that I'm right to make myself into a better researcher, a better college student, and a better, a, just a better learned individual in, a, in every way. So any additional thoughts or observations you see to see fit? Um, 
I thought it was a little bit too led by the um, by the two new student dialogue workers. They were too focused on everything. We were we were going off on tangents and talking about stuff related to new to um, the sexual politics of hooking up, but it went. You could tell they were trying to funnel it into a certain idea that they wanted us to accept, which is kind of annoying because that's not what a dialogue should do. The dialogue should be talking about what, whatever the, the participants are talking about. So that's my two cents on that, and um, go Tigers.